Once upon a time, there was a little, ugly little germ. His real name was Bacteria, but his friends called him back for short. I wish I were a nicer guy, but I am yucky, and here's why. I like to hide on hands and food. I'm germy, green, and very rude. Now, ever since he was a little germ, Bag would spend his days wandering around, looking for places for himself and his friends to hide. There were lots of places for germs like Bat and his friends to hang out. Germs look the things you carry around every day, like your backpack, or your shoes, before, or your food before you wash or cook it, or if you forget to put it in the refrigerator, and most of all, your hands. Everybody knows that germs are everywhere. There are places that I love, your shoes, your books, your baseball glove, your hands the counter on your food, they put me in a germy mood. Now the one thing you may not know is that even though Bat and his other germy friends are everywhere, it's easy to get rid of them. Wait, wait, wait! Don't let them know! If they find out, I'll have to go! More about that later. So anyway, one day, Bat was out looking for a fun new place to hide and invite all his other friends over to play. He especially liked hanging around with children who didn't know anything about keeping their food safe from germs. He knew that if they didn't know about him, they didn't know how easy it was to chase him away. It's easy to get rid of me. You can do it, don't you see? But many children just don't know that's great for me, so here I go. Bag knew that if the children found out about him, they would want to get rid of him. After all, he was a germ, and no one likes germs. Suddenly, he saw a group of children in the kitchen. As he snuck in, it looked like they were doing lots of things that were going to make it easy for him to hide. Oh boy, this is going to be great! They didn't put their mouth back in the refrigerator. Yippee, yippee, I hate cold! They forgot to rinse their fruits and vegetables with water. Dirty snacks, just what I like! They put their dirty stuff, their smelly, smelly sneakers, and dirty backpacks on the counter. Oh boy, putting their stuff on the counter where food belongs. And worst of all, they were about to eat without washing their hands. Yay! But wait, suddenly the children remembered what they had learned in school that day. They started out by washing their hands. Oh no, they didn't so. Next, they rinsed their fruits and vegetables with water. Oh no, I don't like clean snacks. Then they put all the cold food, like milk, back in the refrigerator when they were done. Brr, I feel a terrible cold coming on. All of a sudden, Bat's excitement was gone. He had nowhere to hide anymore. That's it for me, I'm done, it's true. Cause now you know just what to do. Put food away, clean counters too. Wash fruits and veggies through and through. And one last secret, now I'll tell. Just wash your hands and wash them well. Soap and water do the trick. They make you clean, but make me sick. So now you know the true story of that. Those children had discovered that there were easy ways to get rid of him, but they had to remember that even though they got rid of that, there were other germs out there too. Hi, my name is Mariah Grohaus. I am in the seventh grade. I belong to the Trout River Trendsetters 4-H Club, and I am from Bremer County. bacteria in the kitchen. The four important things to remember when dealing with food are clean, separate, chill, and cook. First, clean. Wash hands and surfaces often. You can't see, taste, or smell them. They are sneaky little critters and they like to get and they can spread throughout the kitchen and get onto hands, food, countertops, dishes, and utensils. Did you know only 67% of Americans report they always wash countertops, dishes, and utensils after preparing each food? They are foodborne bacteria, and if eaten, can cause foodborne illness. So on your mark, get set, clean. Number one, rub a duck. Wash your hands with warm water and soap for at least 20 seconds before and after after handling food, using the bathroom, changing diapers, after sneezing, coughing, and after handling pets. For best results, use warm water to moisten hands, then apply soap, and rub hands together for 20 seconds before then rinsing with water. Number two, keep your sink clean. Wash your cutting boards, dishes, utensils, and countertops with hot water and soap after preparing
preparing each food item and before going on to the next. Number three, towel toss. Consider using paper towels to clean up kitchen surfaces. When done, throw away the towel. If you use cloth towels, wash them often in the hot cycle of your washing machine. If you use kitchen sponges, replace them frequently. Using a mixture of three quarters teaspoon liquid chlorine bleach per quart of water can provide some added protection against bacteria growth on surfaces. Flood the surface with the bleach solution and allow it to stand for several minutes, then rinse with clean water and air dry or pat dry with fresh paper towels. Bleach solutions can lose their effectiveness over time, so discard unused portions after one week. Before handling fruits and vegetables, make sure you wash your hands and clean your cutting board, countertops, and utensils. Thoroughly rinse fresh produce under running tap water, including those of skins and rinds that are not eaten. Package fruits and vegetables labeled washed, ready to eat, or triple washed need not be washed. Never use detergent or bleach to wash fresh fruits or vegetables because these products are not intended for consumption. Rub firm skin fruits and vegetables under running tap water or scrub them with a clean vegetable brush while rinsing with running tap water. Second, separate. Don't cross-contaminate. Cross-contamination is how bacteria can be spread. Improper handling of raw meat, poultry, and seafood can create an inviting environment for cross-contamination. As a result, harmful bacteria can be spread to food and throughout the kitchen. Number one, lather up. Always start with a clean seam. Remember what we've already talked about. Washing hands, cutting boards, countertops, surfaces, utensils, and cutting boards. Number two, take two. Using one cutting board for fresh photos and a separate one for raw meat, poultry, or seafood. Number three, clean your plate. Never place cooked food back on a plate that previously held raw meat, poultry, or seafood. Number four, safely separate. Separate raw meat, poultry, and seafood from other foods in your grocery shopping cart, shopping bags, and in your refrigerator. Number five, seal it. To prevent juices from raw meat, poultry, and seafood from dripping onto other foods in the refrigerator, place these foods in plastic bags or sealed containers on the bottom shelf of the fridge. Number five, seal it. Number six, marinating mandate. Sauce that is used to marinate raw meat, poultry, or seafood should not be used on cooked foods unless it is boiled first. Remember, keep it clean, wash those juices, and spread the word, not the bacteria. Third, chill. Back down. Refrigerate promptly and properly. Refrigeration at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below is one of the most effective ways to reduce the risk of foodborne illness. Microorganisms grow more rapidly at warmer temperatures, and research shows that keeping a constant refrigerated temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below is one of the most effective ways to reduce risk of foodborne illness. The bacterium, Listeria, can grow at refrigerator temperature. Listeriosis has the second highest fatality rate among all infections caused by foodborne pathogens. To prevent illness, keep your fridge at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. The cool rule. Number one, use this tool to keep it cool. Use a refrigerator thermometer to be sure the temperature is consistently 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Number two, the chill factor. Refrigerate or freeze perishables, prepared foods, and leftovers within two hours of purchase or use. Always marinate foods in the refrigerator. Number three, the thaw law. Never defrost food at room temperature. Thaw food in the refrigerator. If you will cook food immediately for a quick thaw, defrost food in the microwave. Or enclose the food in an airtight package and submerge it in cold water. Never defrost food in hot water because bacteria can multiply rapidly between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Number four, divide and conquer. Separate large amounts of leftovers into shallow containers for quicker cooling in the refrigerator. Number five, avoid the pack attack. Don't overstuff the refrigerator. Cold air must circulate to keep food safe. Number six, rotate before it's too late. Use or discard chilled foods as recommended in the USDA cold storage chart found at fightback.org slash cold storage. Number seven, 
don't go too low. As you approach 32 degrees Fahrenheit, ice creases can begin to form and lower the quality of foods, such as raw fruits, vegetables, and eggs. A refrigerator thermometer will help you determine whether you are too close to this temperature. Always refrigerate or freeze meat, poultry, eggs, and other perishables as soon as you get them home from the store. Never let raw meat, poultry, eggs, cooked food, or cut fresh fruits and vegetables sit at room temperature more than two hours. Reduce this to one hour when the temperature is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And last, cook. Cook to proper temperatures. Did you know one out of every four hamburgers turns brown before it has been cooked to a safe internal temperature? Cooking food safely is a matter of degrees. Foods are properly cooked when they reach a high enough internal temperature to kill the harmful bacteria that cause foodborne illness. How does your safe cooking know-how measure up? Number one, cook it right. Food is safely cooked when it reaches a high enough internal temperature to kill the harmful bacteria that cause illness as measured with a food thermometer. Number two, keep it hot. On a buffet table, hot food should be kept at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Keep food hot with slow cookers and warming trays. When bringing hot soup, chili, or crab dip to an outdoor party, keep it all piping hot before and during serving. Transport hot foods in insulated thermal containers. Keep containers closed until serving time. Some sizzling cooking tips are, is it done yet? Use a food, clean food thermometer to measure the internal temperature of food to make sure meat, poultry, egg dishes, casseroles, and other types of food are cooked all the way through. Microwave must. When cooking in a microwave oven, make sure there are no cold spots in food. For best results, cover food, stir, and rotate for even cooking. If there is no turntable, rotate the dish once or twice by hand during cooking. Observe stand time. Oil and buffer. Bring sauces, soups, and gravies to a boil when reheated. Some people are at higher risk for developing foodborne illness, including pregnant women, young children, older adults, and people with weakened immune systems. For these people, extra care should be taken to follow the four simple steps of clean, separate, chill, and cook. In conclusion, I have just went over the important aspects of food safety. The four simple steps to keep food safe are clean, wash hands and surfaces often, separate, don't cross contaminate, chill, refrigerate promptly, and cook. Cook to proper temperatures. And that's how to fight back. All this information can be found at www.fightback.org. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, where did you get your idea for this presentation? From Fight Back. We did it for the county as the Clover Kid Project, and then I did it for 